These are songs for children? Really? I'm assuming they're geared to ages 12 and under since they are cartoons. These music videos look so cheery on the surface with their colorful backgrounds and smiling characters, but if you look under the surface, they are more disturbing than happy and without any regard to child development. When it comes to the Bible, I've come to appreciate the distinction between law and gospel. To put it very simply, law tells us what we are to do and be. Gospel tells us what Christ has done for us. Both the Old Testament and New Testament contain both law and and gospel. My first observation about the lyrics to these songs is that they are almost all law and no gospel. These songs are do, do, and more do. I had the most hope for song number two, which is called We Thank You, Jehovah, because of the title, but it's amazing how even this song is turned into being stuff we, and especially kids, need to do, rather than simply thanking God for his attributes or blessings. Thanking Jehovah for the privilege of prayer, guidance in doing your will, our vows to fulfill, the honor to preach. Wow, thanking God for stuff turns into a sermon about our duties. Song number 120, Listen, Obey, and Be Blessed, is a good description of pure law. Grace, however, gives the opposite order. Be blessed because of nothing you did, but in spite of all you have done, because of what Christ did for you, and then live in a manner worthy of your calling. My second observation is the adult level of some of the songs, regardless of the cute little visuals. For example, number 92, Preach the Word, a euphemism for Distribute Watchtower Publications. Witnesses always like to point to the example of Jesus sending out the seventy, or the early church supposedly going door to door, but I've never seen any example in the Bible of children doing this, having such a heavy trip put on them. I believe that genuine New Testament evangelism comes from giftedness combined with the love of Christ, not some expectation put on children by an organization. I put a link in the box to a documentary about Marjo Gortner. He was uh, turned into a child star preacher by his parents, and I think there are some parallels. Notice some of the weighty phrases in this song. It's so vital as the end draws near. Opposition may bring shame and disgrace. It's just so inappropriate, so depressing, and so heavy for children. Song number 106, Gaining Jehovah's Friendship, also sets forth very heavy concepts for children based on a slightly distorted Psalm 15. Embrace your word, have faith, loyal, true, just, honest in heart, obey your word, etc. It's interesting to note <clears throat> that Psalm 15 doesn't really say anything about becoming Jehovah's friend. It's also important to note that the psalms that set forth God's righteous standards are counterbalanced by other psalms that speak of God's mercy, forgiveness, and loving kindness, and even the promise of a Messiah and Savior. My third observation is the unique watchtower works emphasized in these songs. Serving Jehovah is, of course, conflated with serving the watchtower organization. I personally found song number 89, Be Wise My Son, the most repulsive in this respect. I'm going to list all the behaviors we see the cartoon kids doing in this song in the order that they are shown. Reading literature at school, praying, cleaning the kingdom hall, opening a door for someone, going to the district convention, sitting nicely at the meeting, standing and singing at the meeting, being baptized, going door to door, street witnessing from a wheelchair in case you can't go door to door, praying, thinking about paradise earth, sitting nicely at the meeting, singing at the meeting, and being baptized again. One phrase in the song says, Your youth and devotion to me you freely give, while showing a child at a meeting. Now, isn't the phrase, you freely give, incredibly ironic in this context? How can this be something the child is freely giving? Aren't witness children forced to go to many meetings? Do the parents ask if they want to go or not? How can something be freely given if it is coerced or required? Now, the worst thing about this video. 
the child baptisms, shown actually twice with two different kids in this two-and-a-half-minute song. First of all, considering the implications of baptism into the Watchtower organization, it is completely wrong and despicable to baptize children. In this video, they appear to be not even young teenagers. We all know the horror stories about what will happen to them in the future if they choose to leave the Watchtower. The words that are sung while these baptisms are being shown are, Out of your own heart you serve me, and furnish praise by your own choice. How can this possibly be a child's own choice when they live in such isolation? They are not allowed to read publications from other religions. They are not allowed to hear what former members have to say. They are not allowed to visit other churches. They are not even allowed to have friends outside of the religion. They are all termed bad association. Children can't possibly understand what is involved in signing on with the Watchtower Corporation in making the supposed choice. And most children naturally want to please their parents, so of course that is also a huge factor. In the annual meeting, governing body member Loesch said, quote, So please, parents, don't be passive, but actively steer children towards baptism. End of quote. You cannot have it both ways. You can't claim it is their choice while at the same time actively steering. So... Even in spite of all this, they're trying to make kids believe it is all of their own volition by using words like, out of your own heart, and your own choice. This will probably increase their guilt later because it's put into their minds that it's their own choice. Now here's one more shocker for the road. If you look at this image, you can see the child pointing to a shelf of what looks like Watchtower publications. The words of the song with it are All Who Embrace Your Word. Very interesting, as they go to such lengths all the time to say that they are not inspired. In all six songs, there are only two phrases that even suggest God's love, beloved son and bonding in love. I think it's a glaring omission in songs for young children to not include a simple and direct statement like, Jesus loves you, or even Jehovah loves you, in any of them. In closing, here's the first Sunday school song, Young Children Learn in Many Christian Churches.